Let's move to another topic that's that I think is a little interesting here. Um, we're gonna I'll, I'll phrase it this way. We'll go with some high end running backs that are coming into a midlife crisis, uh, and you're in a little bit of a quandary with them. And you know that there seems to be most of the top guys in dynasty drafts right now are kind of in that realm. And now Simmons is a, old. Yeah, he should have had a game years ago, but he can't go home because he hates his wife. <laughs> Um, You've seen her at the Christmas party. She's the one that gets plastered and calls him a retard. <laughs> um, so Back before, I, I, that was politically incorrect. <laughs> we got enough. We got enough influx of some young talent this year, but a lot of the stalwarts and uh, and good good guys that have been holding it down here for a couple of years, the Kamaras, the Dalvins, the Zeeks, the Henrys, all over uh, twenty six. All over 26, going into second contracts or just got paid. Aaron Jones is in that mix. Free agent uh, still. On Eckler, all those kind of guys. I just wanted to have a conversation. It's the, the age-old dynasty uh, conversation, and a lot of organizations out there uh, will tell you that this is when you got to sell – that you got you to sell these running backs off because they're – in their second contract and they're past the, the 26 mark or whatever. So, you know, sell them, get what you can and, and, you know, just keep restocking the cupboard. So let's have yeah, a little conversation age, about those guys. The age old conversation about old age, right? Midlife crisis. I, a lot of them probably just off that new contract went and bought a red sports car. So yeah, that's uh, definitely a running back midlife crisis. I mean, you're at the end of the road at 26. I mean, you left for dead. It's Might as well throw him in the trash. End of the road. Uh, I always like when Casey men. sings. I wish I had as I wish I had a a passable singing voice so that, <laughs> so that I could sing. But my voice is so bad that I just don't sing unless the it's music like your mustache growing turned up. Right, I just shave it every day. I just don't sing, <laughs> especially so on what the mic. It, and I thought this was a little interesting because you have kind of we've said this a bunch of times, but you have Big Co who's you know, more of a wheeler and dealer. He likes to move and shake and, and, and sell things. He's in it for the thrill of the, of the hunt. He's kind of like a, an 80s song, uh, Eye of the Tiger. Um, and then you got Jay Wayne, who's, you know, he's not going to pursue too many trades. If there's a deal to be made that, that's good value, he'll make it, but he's not going to go searching it out. He kind of does his research and just settles in on his guys. And I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle there. So I think this was an interesting conversation for all of us to have. And I think I know we're pretty much, we mostly lay on all of them, but we can kind of branch it off into separate guys. If you guys feel a certain way about the group, and then maybe there's one or two outliers in that kind of group. So what do you think, Big Co? The, the Zeeks, the Dalvins, the Kamaras, the Henrys, these are all first round picks. Um, and then Aaron Jones, uh, 26 going into a second contract. What are your thoughts on on moving those guys, getting what you can, or, or riding those things out into the sunset? Or are you like two more years? Or what are you thinking? Well, um, it's the get what you can part that I don't really agree with. You that, know? that was probably the wrong statement. Get, still, get as much get great as you value. Can. Right, right, yeah. right. Get, get well, they done. all still hold pretty yeah. significant value. Like you said, they're first-round startup picks. Yeah, so should I mean, you try and capitalize on that value now before it gets – Somebody like Alvin and Dalvin, those two guys could get you a whole new team, right? You sell one of those guys, you get a whole new team. And I don't think there's anything wrong with going out on top. Um, I actually sold Alvin Kamara on um, in a home league this year where, you know, a lot of people, A, some people that doesn't. They, and that dude won league. the championship, didn't he? Yeah, he did. No, well, he did obviously. No, oh, he, he didn't. didn't. He did. Oh, he, he had Allen and it, lost. He got bat, awesome. he got beat by the Josh Allen dig stack on Monday night. He just that had to watch incredible. that <clears throat> lead, that seventy two wow. point lead evaporate or whatever. <laughs> Shout out awesome. TJ for winning that shit. Go ahead and go. To, I had to double. T it took me like two days to figure out he didn't that, that Kevin didn't win. I was like, I saw it in the group text, and I was like, wait, what? And I had to go back and look, and I was like, oh crap. Hey, does anyway. total points pay out in that league, Casey? Mm -mm. No. So uh, put that with the eight man. I sold Alvin. Some people in the league were thinking that I sold him for way too much because they don't understand trade values. And some people in the league, Casey, like, what are you doing? Why didn't you call me and tell me he was a, <laughs> you know? So it's just like, you sell a guy like that. You're going to catch it from both ends. You, I've, I've, I, I earned the one, two in the rookie draft with Alvin on my team last year you know so it's like i 
I have with the injuries, I sold some older older receivers, yada yada yada, up and down. I just I, I pretty much got a king's ransom for him, and it was just basically to to entertain myself. Like Casey said, I was like, all right, well, it was a fun trade, and we'll see what happens. Because like it's and, been a minute since I made a trade. Yeah, right. We'll just ride it out. You got any more we'll of them? We we'll just have a good. You got some more trades for me? I, I, we'll just have a good time. Um, I want him trade offers. I got. I mean, I got two first round picks. I got a first round pick from him this year. I got first round pick from him next year. I got Chase Claypool. I uh, got um, Gasecki, which was a you know, it's a really good. We've we've seen Gasecki play so well now. If he got a if he's got a football coming his way, he's going to catch it. He's a really good young up and coming tight end to help a team that doesn't have great tight ends and. Um, I got Marlon Mack as well. I got a second round pick. I got the third round pick. I gave up like a third round pick two years from now just because sometimes it's what you have to do in a trade to get it done. But I got a Side decent bar, amount. It's a, it's, it's a $125 league, so it's not like it's a home league that's $10. Like I know a lot of y'all dynasty analysts like to play for. Uh, but we're, we're, we're usually, if we're talking about trades and leagues, they're usually at least over 100. And here's yeah, some advice. Over two. Don't play in... Thirty-five twenty-dollar leagues play in like a couple expensive leagues. Continue, Bingo. I like that. If you got thirty, if you're in thirty ten-dollar leagues, go ahead and get you a fifty-dollar league. Splurge. No, fuck that. Sell off twenty-five of those teams. Get yourself a hundred fifty-dollar league. Yeah, something something that'll make you excited about it. But anyway, I really did it for fun. I, I've I've had a good team. I had a I won the championship the year before Alvin Kamara was a rookie. I've uh, spent three or four years now, haven't won anything. I've been, I was the odds on favorite to win two years in a row. Got beat in the first round of playoffs, and then started missing the playoffs. And then I had the one, two rookie picks. Like, whatever. I'm going to have a good time here. I feel like I got a lot for him, for him but it's never enough. It wasn't enough. I could have gotten more probably if I'd have put him up for auction, but it got hammered out one night. Trade got done. It is what it is. Um, I would like right now, we just saw Zeke go through a, the, da, the, a, the the loss of Dak and it took a couple of weeks for Andy Dalton and things get going. Um, the whole team basically quit for a couple of weeks and then they kind of brought themselves yeah, back up. Playing with backup so, to backup offensive linemen in a Zeke, lot of spots. Well, that too, that too. So Zeke had a and good... And backup to backup quarterback. Zeke had a good week or two. Um, yeah, Dalton got knocked out for a couple of weeks. Zeke had a good week or two to end the season, so that was good. But right now, I wouldn't sell Zeke. I'd put him back on the field next year, hopefully with a healthy Dak and then I've I, I, I personally wouldn't sell Zeke in the offseason unless you find that person who understands what happened and they expect to get you, you, you get, get good value. I could, Dalvin Cook seems, Dalvin Cook feels younger to me. Dal, Dalvin Cook, Dalvin and Alvin feel like they're in better, better shape. Like Zeke feels like to me, he could be on a slippery slope. He's a thicker guy to begin with. And if he doesn't take, he's well, well paid. Of course, Alvin and Dalvin are too, but they're slenderer. You know, I mean, Dalvin's arms, slender. Would, Dalvin's arms will break the windows when you walk in the front door. He's a beast, but, you know, Zeke feels like he could easily be a little bit overweight at any time. And Dalvin and Alvin don't make me feel that way. Um, yeah. And I mean, and, and if, if Dalvin and Alvin are right and getting fed properly, like they're, I think Dalvin might be the best back in the league minus CMC maybe. And cause when he's right, he's so electric and Kamara's right up there. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I agree, I guess. When you were saying, uh, Zeke was crushing in the first half of the year with, uh, Dak, Dak. So 27, 22, 17, 20, 23. Uh, those are the first couple of games with a semi okay offensive those are line top and th the top right. three, no, top three numbers. That'll get you top three right. all day long. And he looked, and he looked good. And, uh, so, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I probably am. I got a team that just won the championship with Zeke and Dalvin Cook, and I'm probably going to load it up again. I was I lost last year, had that same roster, um, lost last year in the in the last round of the playoffs, and came in this year and got the W, and got the win. And I'm going to probably load that bitch up again. Now I could understand saying if Zeke would have went out and been good, I could understand maybe saying, Hey, maybe I'll sell one of those two assets and reset a little bit. I just, I traded for Miles Sanders week 13 in that league to just kind of bolster up. Cause I lost Will Fuller going into that uh, with PD suspension. 
fucking Will Fuller. I said I was going to get rid of Will Fuller. It ain't one thing, it's another. I said I could get rid of He almost fucked me again. He got me last year. That's the reason I lost the championship. He tried to get me again. I said, no, not this time, Will Fuller. I'm fucking trading for Miles Sanders to an Eagles fan who was mad at Miles Sanders, and I got Miles Sanders for a first. And it was a long, long trade, but there was it was a first. And two twos, I got Mostert and Mooney and the, a, a two this year and a two next year and a first. Uh, and I traded Will Fuller in that deal as well. Um, you got the first in Miles Sanders? No, no. I traded the first uh, a next year's two. Gotcha. Um, and, and Will Fuller. And Will Fuller, yeah. that's Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. And got back Mostert, which got injured, Miles Sanders and Mooney. I think I traded two twos, actually. Um this year and next year, but I had multiple twos going in there. So I still have twos. Um, so I could see it, but I'm mostly not on this train of saying, Hey, you know, and let, it, it, obviously it comes down to roster construction. If you're struggling and you don't think that you're going to be competitive, like I got a team that's ready to load up again and roll. So I'm, I'm hanging on. If, if you feel like your team's backsliding or like you were saying, big co, maybe you were kind of in a purgatory there. Couldn't quite get over the hump, even though maybe you made some good draft picks this year. Like I could get down with saying, Hey, let me, let me rebuild and restock. I get the idea of saying, Hey, let me rebuild and restock this team. Because like you said, you got a ridiculous value in Claypool who could be absolutely a number one draft pick in startups before too long and multiple firsts and a bunch of other guys who are fun. And I mean, he could be DK. One other guy of those DK is basically like fucking second in ADP right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and any one of those guys that you picked up, Marlon Mack, Gusecki, I forget who else it was, but like one of those guys could hit. And then that's a, that's just ridiculous trade. Um, and Gusecki, we, like you said, you've already seen some athleticism in Gusecki, and I got a whole thing on tight ends that I'll, we'll talk about either later in the show. Or and let me show. let me let me put one more layer onto it. Yeah. Or just, I didn't think I was going to make the playoffs. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, I just after I traded Alvin Kamara, maybe even before, I think I'd won two or three games in a row, and then after I traded him, I kept winning. And I ended up in the playoffs, and uh, I was like, well, that sucks. I wish I had Alvin, but you know. I wasn't trying to tank, but it's like, if you're going to trade your best player, now you're trying to trade someone. Now I, I was trying to trade Julio. I of course started with the worst teams in the league, went back a couple of weeks. You know, I, I wasn't trying to do it fat. I wasn't trying to trade Julio for the person that was going to be the one ten or the one eleven rookie pick. I was trying to get the one, two or the one three rookie pick for Julio, you know? So mm-hmm. I went two weeks before I even talked to Jay Wayne and he had already picked up Julio in the other league, the other home league that we have. And I guess maybe he didn't want to double down on it. And within one week now, Julio's out, you know? So if, it's, if I would have had, you know, another healthy week of Julio, I could have traded him, that kind of thing. But it was just one of those things where, you know, I did get a lot for Alvin, but you just, you, you, you can't get enough for somebody like that. And mm-hmm. if, if, if you really want to break it down to for like a first round pick might buy you, in a startup might buy you into the seventh round. Okay. This is so, because when people were one or two guys in the league did not understand how tr- real blockbuster trades go down. These are the guys that hardly make any of trades. And if they're going to make a trade, they, they're going to give you, they want you to give you them a second for their fourth round pick straight up. Mm-hmm. Like it just makes no sense. Right. So I was trying to explain it to a guy who thought it was a bad trade for me or for the guy that got Alvin and thought he paid way too much. And I was like, well, if, maybe you can get a, seventh round pick for a first you know you trade a first next year in, in a startup yes. you get seventh, yourself into the seventh st- right startup yeah six, like, late six early seventh maybe throw another first rounder on there you go from that sixth up into the three four. late three early four yeah, late three early, early four. four yeah and you throw in the guy who had a, a, a few weeks before that chase claypool we scored four or five touchdowns in the game whatever four touchdowns he'd never do that again in his career more than likely highly unlikely he does that again so maybe you're in the now you're in the late mid second and in a startup draft to go from the end of the second round to the very beginning of the front for top of the round. I mean, if you know, of course, at this point, um, Saquon Barkley's hurt already, Christian McCaffrey's hurt already. We're into the season now. Alvin Kamar is the best, Alvin and Dalvin are the best two running backs in football. Um, so if we if you did a startup in the middle of the year, the first two picks would be Alvin or Dalvin, you know, so to get there. 
uh, Marlon Mack and Mike Kosecki in a second round pick would don't it would, it would never get you to the top of the from mm-hmm. the late from the mid early third late two to the into a, a top five draft pick. So because those those top five or six players every year, and sometimes it's two, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's eight. This year I think it's a bunch. Um, they're so valuable. You can't even get there if you don't get that luck of the draw with the random picks come out for who gets mm-hmm. who in a draft. You can't get there. So, I I was trying to explain it to somebody. You, you can't you can't buy Alvin Kamara, and if you can, good for you. You know. Yeah. And the dude, well, he didn't win the championship, but he he got second he was there place and, and he, he got his money. I mean, he, he really should have. Right. He was there between Diggs and Josh Allen. He got like seventy two points or something in one. And it's, so. he's been a middling team since the, since the draft ever started. Mm-hmm. He's never been terrible enough to get a you know a really good one or two draft pick, and he's never been good enough to even be in the playoffs. He's always been the one five one six every year. Yeah, trades for Dalvin and goes to the, trades for Alvin Kamara and goes to the championship. I will say for a lot of these guys, it's outside of Zeke. I like what you said. I probably you got to get Zeke back on the field unless you can catch that one guy who understands the value there and is ready to pay. I will say that you know. This heading into this season and maybe the start of the season is probably where all these guys will peak out at value, or at least Dalvin and and Kamara and those guys will, will probably you probably won't be able to get the return that you could get right this minute. Maybe going heading into next season when they're going to be twenty seven and had another season and maybe Dalvin got nicked or Kamara got nicked. You know what I mean? So sure. I, I can understand the theory of saying get rid of these guys, but for the most part. It's really hard to win without one of those top guys on your team, and it's really hard to buy one of those top guys on your team. So if your team sucks, then I get it, or you're a middling team, then I get it. But for the most part, I'm going to ride out and try to build the team around him and, and spend two more years of trying to go after this thing. Jay Wayne, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think – as much as I'm a, like a Zeke hater, you can't sell Zeke right now. You could buy him if you wanted to. Um, I'm not trying to sell Kamara or Dalvin Cook um, on on the teams where I have those guys. I'm trying. To, I I was in, you know, I had the points lead in the, in the one home league where I have Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones, and the guy who won it beat me in the first week of the playoffs. I had the most points, didn't have a buy, ended up getting unlucky. Um, but I'm gonna fill that up again next year. Um, and I think I'm probably, you know, I think, I don't think there's that much question. Like you got Kamara, Dalvin, Zeke, you know, those guys, everybody knows about those guys. It's more of like, what do you, you know, what do you do with Aaron Jones? You know, he doesn't have a contract yet. 